Apple is taking another big step towards self-sufficiency by developing its own Wi-Fi chip for the iPhone 17. According to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, the company is shifting away from Broadcom's chips, a move that could lead to better connectivity, lower cost, and improved integration within Apple's ecosystem. This change isn't surprising as Apple has been working toward reducing its dependence on third-party suppliers for years. By creating its own Wi-Fi chip, the company gains full control over how its devices handle wireless connections, optimizing performance for users. For a long time, Apple has relied on Broadcom to provide Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips, but reports indicate that the company is determined to bring this technology in-house. Kuo previously suggested that Apple would make this switch within a few years, and with the iPhone 17, that prediction seems to be coming true. Designing its own chip means Apple can fine-tune both hardware and software, resulting in better efficiency, smoother connectivity, and longer battery life. Reducing reliance on outside suppliers also gives Apple more flexibility in how it develops future devices. A major advantage of the shift is support for Wi-Fi 7, which offers faster speeds and lower latency. The iPhone 16 already includes Wi-Fi 7 using Broadcom's chips, but Apple's own chip could further enhance its capabilities. Wi-Fi 7 promises speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, improves stability and better performance for tasks like gaming, video streaming, and calls. If Apple successfully optimizes its chip for Wi-Fi 7, the iPhone 17 could offer a smoother and faster online experience. There's still some uncertainty about how Apple will roll out this new technology. Initially, analyst Jeff Pugh suggested that only the Pro models would include the in-house Wi-Fi chip, but recent reports indicate that Apple might introduce it across all four iPhone 17 models. If this happens, it would mark a significant change in Apple's strategy as the company has traditionally reserved high-end features for its premium devices. However, Apple has been working toward making its core technologies more uniform across its product lineup, which could explain why the shift is happening now. Looking further ahead, Apple may eventually integrate Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular connectivity into a single chip. The company has already begun moving in this direction with the iPhone 16e, which features the C1 modem, Apple's first in-house cellular chip. If Apple successfully combines all wireless technologies into one component, it could improve power efficiency, reduce internal space usage, and lower manufacturing costs. While it's unclear whether this combined chip will debut with the iPhone 17 or arrive in later models, Apple's long-term goal seems to be creating a fully unified wireless system. By taking control of its wireless technology, Apple is strengthening its position in the industry. The company has already seen major success with its custom processors, such as the A-series chips in iPhones and the M-series chips in Macs, both of which offer impressive performance and efficiency. If Apple's in-house Wi-Fi chip follows the same path, users can expect faster and more stable connections, potentially leading to better battery life as well. However, there are challenges to consider. Transitioning to a self-designed chip means Apple must manage all potential issues on its own without relying on Broadcom's expertise in wireless technology. There's also some uncertainty about how the switch will affect Bluetooth connectivity and overall network performance. Even though Apple has a strong track record with custom hardware, making a Wi-Fi chip that meets or exceeds Broadcom standards is no small task. Despite these potential hurdles, Apple's decision to move in this direction signals its commitment to self-reliance. If the company successfully merges Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity in the future, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates on the latest in tech. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Have you ever imagined just how slim a smartphone can get without sacrificing its performance? Samsung's upcoming Galaxy S25 Edge may be on the brink of answering that question, but there's a twist to the story. The Galaxy S25 Edge is poised to give Apple's iPhone 17 Air a run for its money. Both of these upcoming smartphones are expected to wow us with their incredibly slim designs, but the real question is, how slim can they go while still offering the powerful features we expect from premium devices? The iPhone 17 Air is rumored to be around 6.25 millimeters thick, while the Galaxy S25 Edge could potentially come in even thinner at 6.4 millimeters, with some speculations hinting that it may be as thin as 5.8 millimeters. But let's not focus solely on how thin these phones are. There's also something else to consider. OnePlus is preparing to unveil the Open 2, which could be as thin as 4 millimeters when unfolded. Yes, a foldable phone at just 4 millimeters. However, let's return to the Galaxy S25 Edge, which has sparked plenty of buzz due to its early performance results. Recently, the Galaxy S25 Edge appeared on Geekbench, a well-known benchmarking tool that evaluates a phone's performance by testing its processor, graphics, and overall speed. 
It measures how well a device handles multitasking, gaming, and overall performance. The first test results for the Galaxy S25 Edge were exactly consistent, with a score of 3,005 in the single-core test and 6,945 in the multi-core test. But more recent results have shown a notable shift. The updated benchmarks show that the Galaxy S25 Edge scored 2,806 in the single-core test, slightly lower than before, but it achieved a much stronger score of 8,416 in the multi-core test. This suggests that the phone could be more efficient at handling multiple tasks at once, which is a major plus for those who use their phones for gaming or multitasking. That said, it's important to remember that these are early test results and the device isn't official yet, so these figures should be taken with a pinch of salt. Performance aside, Galaxy S25 Edge is expected to feature some impressive specs, including a 200 megapixel main camera that will surely appeal to photography enthusiasts. On the front, the phone will likely sport a 12 megapixel selfie camera. The display will be equipped with an LTPO panel that offers a 120 hertz refresh rate and a peak brightness of 2,600 nits. If that's not bright enough for you, I'm not sure what is. For durability, Samsung is expected to include an armor aluminum frame and Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2, making the Galaxy S25 Edge resistant to drops and scratches. Under the hood, the Galaxy S25 Edge will likely be powered by 12 gigabytes of random access memory, RAM, and UFS 4.0 storage, ensuring that the device runs fast and efficiently, even when handling large files and apps. It will also feature support for Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4 and USB-C 3.2, ensuring quick data transfer and seamless connectivity. In terms of charging, the Galaxy S25 Edge is expected to support 25 watt charging speeds. While this might not be the fastest charging solution available, it should be more than enough for quick top-ups throughout the day. As for the processor, while it hasn't been officially confirmed, it's likely that the Galaxy S25 Edge will be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Elite chipset with Samsung likely sticking with Qualcomm for this generation. We might see Exynos chips return in the Galaxy S20 sticks, but for now, the Snapdragon 8 Elite seems like the safer choice. One thing to keep in mind is the battery. While the battery might be smaller than previous models, the Snapdragon 8 Elite's efficiency should allow the Galaxy S25 Edge to last all day without any major issues. At least it better. If you're as excited about the Galaxy S25 Edge as I am, Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any updates. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Have you been waiting for the One UI 7 update on your Samsung phone? The wait could be nearly over. For the past few months, Samsung fans have been on edge, watching as Galaxy S24 series owners enjoy the beta version of the upcoming update. Meanwhile, millions of other users have been stuck on Android 14 with One UI 6.1, wondering when they'll finally get their hands on the new version. Well, the end of the wait might be closer than we think. Although Samsung hasn't officially confirmed the exact release date, there are several strong indicators that the update could roll out very soon. A key clue is the upcoming launch of the Galaxy S25 series. These new flagship devices will ship with one UI 7 already installed, and they're set to hit shelves on February 7. It's likely that Samsung has been holding off on the global one UI 7 release to keep the focus on the Galaxy S25 series launch. Once those new devices are out in the wild, Samsung